Here comes the stability test. What's on your work list? Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. As Chief Engineer, you always have an ongoing list of maintenance jobs. And that list gets even worse when the ship prepares for a stability test. Of course, it would help if somebody actually told you what to expect for the test. I mean, sure, you might have gotten a test procedure, and it probably provided extensive details about the theory and the math, but that doesn't answer the important question. What's on your list? What do you need to do for the preparations? Enter the answer. This guide gives you some practical advice on preparing the ship for a stability test. First up is the tank configuration. The test procedure will come with a planned tank configuration. Now the tanks need to very closely match that configuration on the day of the test. Small deviations in tank levels are fine, but any tanks that are expected as empty or pressed full should match the procedure. Tell the test coordinator in advance if your tanks will not match the listed configuration. It's not the end of the world, but we do need some advanced warning. What we do not want to do is make any last minute changes on the day of the test. That can cause trouble. Especially warn the coordinator about any problems you might have matching the configuration with your fuel tanks. Now we also need to clarify a few things that for the test. Empty tanks. Any tanks listed as empty in the procedure have to be completely empty. This means stripped dry and gas freed, certified gas freed. You can have moisture on the walls of the tank, that's fine, but no pools of liquid, none at all. The test coordinator and USCG inspector are both going to crawl inside these tanks and check them. We're going to go straight to the lowest point in the tank and search for pools of liquid and also check between all of the frame spaces. Make sure we don't find anything. Shipyard work. Finish it the day before the test. This one has caused me more headaches than anything else. The day before the stability test, the test coordinator is going to be performing a deadweight survey. We're going to call this day one. Ideally, all work on the vessel should be done by this point. And I mean completely done, there are no shipyard workers even on the vessel. Now I realize that's rarely the case, but if you need to do more work, it cannot continue on the day of the test. You cannot have shipyard workers on the day of the test. They cannot even be working in the morning. All contractors and shipyard personnel need to have their tools and equipment off of the ship by the end of day one. Now I know one thing that everybody asks is, well, what happens if we're running late? What do we do with all of the equipment? As far as the stability test is concerned, you don't necessarily have to have it physically bolted down. We want your equipment though at least placed in about the same location as its final resting point. Talking about work and stability test, you've noticed how there's this fine balance between the requirements for the test and the practicality of knowing that you have a working ship? Well, if you want an engineer that understands that balance, hire DMS to conduct your next stability test. We offer a host of services, including deadweight survey, lightweight survey, stability test, incline experiment, everything from large to small, you name it. And we offer something that most of the others cannot provide, fast results. At the end of the day, everybody wants to know what were the results? Did we pass or fail? At DMS, we provide preliminary results on the day of the test. And then we perform some QA a few days later, you get the full test report. So if you want fast turnaround and services that are going to help make your stability test easy, check out our website and see how we can help you with your next project. Getting back to st practical matters with the stability test. Dead weight. I'm talking about that engineer's tours. You know, the spare tools and spare parts that you have stuck down in the engine room. That is the kind of dead weight that we need to get off the ship for the stability test. We actually have a hard limit that we have to stay under. I recommend getting some form of temporary storage, some form of large shipping container. You park them on the pier side and put all of your stuff in there for a couple days while we're doing the stability test. 
specifically focus on cleaning out three types of spaces, your bosun stores, your engine room tools and spares, and any other storage spaces that you have. That will take care of most of your deadweight concerns. But don't go overboard. There are a few things that stay on the vessel. Any required life-saving or fire protection equipment, your EEBDs, your firefighting gear, your life rings, your life jackets and immersion suits, anything that the Coast Guard would require, that all stays on the vessel. There's a fine balance between what's considered dead weight and light ship, and this is the kind of thing that DMS can help you with if you hire us as your test coordinator. Tank soundings and inspection. We call this the tank survey. The morning of the incline experiment, all tanks will need to be sounded. Every last one of them. Even the empty voids need to be sounded. Have somebody prepared to go with the test coordinator for sounding each tank. The USCG inspector will also need to climb into each empty tank and verify that they are dry. Have the manholes loose and the tanks certified gas free. They have to be recently checked by a competent person. Now a little sensibility here, that's only the empty tanks. Tanks with liquid in them can stay sealed. Here's another one that's going to drive you mad. Any tanks listed as full will need to be pressed full. This normally means pumping into the tank until liquid actually comes out of the vent pipe. And we'll need to demonstrate that for the inspector. And chiefs, I'm going to tell you this now to save you an embarrassing moment. Check your cross connect valves. Ch double check every last one of them. Triple check. Make sure every cross connect valve is closed. All tank valves need to be closed. During the incline experiment, we cannot have any liquid moving from one tank to another. Do you have a ship's crane? Well then, we can work with that. The stability test is going to require a crane to move weights across the deck. In some cases, the ship may have an onboard crane that can handle the weight movements. The smart vessel owner wants to use that onboard crane and eliminate the cost of renting a pier side crane. In these cases, yes, I absolutely agree we can use the onboard crane. But just remember that the onboard crane has to be returned to its stowed position each time before we can take measurements. And we will need ship's crew on board to operate the crane. So we're looking for a crane operator and a rigging crew to help land the weights on deck. Okay, let's summarize things up. Number one, check your tank configuration. If you look at the tank configuration and say, this isn't going to work, it's absolutely impossible, give us that feedback. Let us know. Our job is here to make your job easier. But once we agree on a tank configuration, stick to it. Another thing that can stop a test is the shipyard work. You have to put the shipyard work on hold the day of the test. Seriously, not kidding about this one. No shipyard workers on board during the day of the test. Then we come to the horrible task of removing dead weight from the ship. I know you guys are going to hate me for this one, but we have to get the dead weight off. And rounding back to our tanks, we're going to be doing soundings on the day of the test, so have somebody ready to go for sounding all of the tanks. The faster we can get that done, the faster we can finish our test and all go home. So that's my work list for you. Work lists really work best when planned ahead and not done on spur of the moment. A stability test requires extensive work to prepare the vessel. I know, and I want to give you every advantage I can for that. I'm hoping this guide will give you some advanced warning of what to expect. I wish you a smooth and successful stability test. Thanks very much. I am Nick, the Naval Architect. You know, it's not magic, it's science. And DMS is here to bring some science to your next ship project. Whether that's stability analysis, ship structures, or stability tests, check out the website to find out how I can make your next project easy. Thanks very much.